Good evening. Welcome to the February 13th edition of the Downers Grove Village Council meeting. If you're here with us in chambers tonight, thank you for coming. Welcome. If you're home watching TV, we're glad you've joined us there as well. As is our normal tradition, we'll begin our meeting tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance. We have the Arrow of Light Den 86 scouts are going to help us this evening, so come on up, guys. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, guys. All right, good work. Good work, scouts. Thanks for coming tonight. Rosa, would you please call the roll? Mayor Barnett? Here. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Sadowski Fugit? Here. Commissioner Gilmartin? Here. Commissioner Glover? Here. Commissioner Tully? Here. Commissioner Davenport? Here. <coughs> Welcome, everybody. Good to see you tonight. Glad to be back. Uh, is there a motion concerning minutes of previous council meetings? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the February 6, 2024 minutes as presented. Second. Any comments or questions on those minutes? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Item four on our agenda tonight is public comments. This is the portion of the meeting where we take public comments on items not on tonight's agenda. There will be other opportunities during the course of the meeting to comment on items that are on the agenda. So if you're here this evening and you've got something on your mind you want to tell us that's not on the agenda, come on up to the podium and let us know what's on your mind. Good evening. My name is Debbie Anderson Phillips, and I'm here tonight representing EQDG Equality Downers Grove. And I am very excited to announce our second annual One Book, One Town, All Community Read. The book we've chosen this year is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I have uh, flyers for everyone. May I approach? Or We are so excited to uh, do this. Uh, last year, the, the One Book, One Town was really well received. We're excited to do it again, to bring our community together, all factions of our community, to read a book that we can discuss and find common ground and compassion. Uh, this is a very delightful book. I highly recommend it. Um, it's very good in the audio book. Oh, luckily, is, yes. A lot of people have read it already. It's very popular. Um, I suggest the audio book as um, the author, the reader has the voices for the children in this book are fabulous. Um, we are also very excited that again we are very supported by our downtown businesses. Uh, Wasabi Restaurant and Bar will be hosting a book discussion on Monday the 11th at noon. On Tuesday, Emmett's will be holding a book discussion at 7. On Wednesday, our wonderful partner, the Downers Grove Library, will be holding a book discussion. And on Thursday, Cadence is generously hosting a party. That one you have to sign up for. There's no cost, but there's a 50 room, 50 person capacity. And we will have all kinds of fun games centered around this book, as well as food and drink. So we hope that you will participate, and I encourage you to read the book. Please come to uh, one of the discussions or the party, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rich Culvaney, and I just wanted to um, offer my thanks for all the hard work this council has been doing. You had an aggressive long-range plan. You put a bunch of items in there, and you decided to take the brave step to do all of them. And it's exciting to watch you guys on TV on Tuesday nights and to see how you're churning through it and how that plan has uh, come to fruition. Well, keep it up. Really uh, appreciate how you're all collaborating together, working more like a board of directors to move this village forward. So really proud of you guys. Thanks. 
Others with subjects not on tonight's agenda. Okay, we will continue forward then. Is there a motion concerning the consent agenda? Mayor, I move that the council adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Two passes unanimously. Item six, our active agenda this evening. This is the portion of the meeting where we plan to take up items on which we will conduct some sort of action this evening. These are items which have been discussed at least once before, sometimes multiple times before. I'll give the scouts a second to <laughs> slide out the door. Thanks again for coming, guys. So on the active agenda, these are items which we have discussed at least one time here on this day as before. Many time, many of them items have been discussed multiple times before. Is there a motion concerning catering liquor licenses? Mayor, I move that the council adopt an ordinance increasing the number of K-1 catering liquor licenses as presented. Second. Any comments or questions from the audience on this item? Comments or questions from the council? Uh, for those wondering at home, we have... Um, our liquor code is available online through the municipal code. We have different types of licenses, and in some cases, those licenses have a limited number of licenses that are issued. Uh, we do that just to give ourselves a little additional oversight. So sometimes, as is the case now, when we expect demand to be higher, we go ahead and adjust those <coughs> quantities of available licenses. That's what's happening this evening. Uh, Rose, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner sadowski fugit Aye. Commissioner Davenport? Aye. Commissioner Tully? Aye. Commissioner Glover? Aye. Commissioner Gilmartin? Aye. Mayor Barnett? Aye. That passes unanimously. Item seven on our agenda is our first reading. This is the portion of the meeting where we take up items on which we do not plan to have any formal action this evening. These are either <clears throat> items we're beginning to discuss tonight or continuations of previous discussion, but these again are items we will not be acting on tonight. So with that, I'll hand it over to Village Manager Fieldman. Thank you, Mayor Barnett. There are four items and three topics on tonight's first reading agenda. Uh, the first two items concern uh, development, proposed development at the Esplanade. I'll turn it over to our Community Development Director, Stan Popovich. Thank you, Manager Fieldman. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the first item is a planned unit development amendment and final plat of subdivision uh, for the property at the northeast corner of Lacey Road and Wood Creek Drive. Uh, shown here on the map on the north northwest uh, section of the village. The property here outlined in red, as I mentioned, is at the northeast corner of Wood Creek and Lacey. If we zoom in a little bit, it's an open lot uh, with no development on it currently. The proposal is to subdivide this existing lot in uh, half here. The north lot will remain undeveloped and the proposed multifamily development here on the south lot here shown uh, on this graphic. Well, we can see the proposal, here's the lot that's on the south lot is for three uh, four-story apartment buildings with parking at a below grade uh, level. Each building will have 99 apartments for a total of 297, a combination of studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom units. A clubhouse is proposed at the uh, southeast corner of the site. The amenities for the clubhouse will include a swimming pool, sun deck, fitness center, uh, meeting and working spaces as well. Vehicular access is proposed uh, with two access points along Wood Creek Drive and a single access point off of Lacey Road. Uh, that's a right in right out as uh, the median there on Lacey would prohibit left turns uh, either out of the site or into the site. Uh, with regard to pedestrian connections, we have them uh, in multiple places here onto Wood Creek and onto Lacey. And then perhaps most importantly is the connection to the business park to the north and to the west as well. So if someone lives here, they could walk to work uh, through the sidewalks that are available there as well. If we take a look at a bird's eye view, this is looking north. So you can see the three apartment buildings, L-shaped apartment buildings, and the clubhouse in the lower right-hand side of that picture there. Uh, the four-story buildings will be clad with masonry, fiber cement panels, metal cladding, and vinyl windows. Uh, this is a view looking uh, from Lacey Road West. The club building is on the left, and the background is building one, and building two is on the right. And then this is just the east facade of building two, which would be the view from Lacey Road as well. <coughs> With regard to stormwater, so uh, stormwater generally run, runs towards the west or northwest in this, in this instance. There are three areas that will be uh, constructed for post-construction best management practices. Uh, water will run into these uh, ponds there at the very beginning, uh, then flow into this pond uh, to the north and to the west. And then these other ponds are all interconnected and work as one system there. So 
Uh, to meet the stormwater requirements, these ponds will be slightly adjusted uh, with some uh, regrading around the periphery of some of these ponds, some overflow weir adjustments, and some restrictor pipe adjustments to provide the required detention. Uh, last year, you might remember the Village Council amended the overall PUD to allow multifamily as a part of this plan unit development. Uh, the comp plan calls for office corporate campus. This is a catalyst site. It also notes that multifamily should be located near significant uh, activity centers and major roadways. At their January 22nd meeting, uh, the Planning Commission found the Plata subdivision met the requirements outlined in the subdivision ordinance and also found that the PUD amendment standards for approval were approved and they recommended approval at their meeting. Uh, Mr. Gary Mori and his team are here tonight <laughs> answering questions and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Stan. Any comments from the council or questions from the council? Mark? Glad you're feeling better, Mayor. Good to see you. Thanks. Uh, no questions. Obviously, this was contemplated back when the amendment was made, and uh, this is completely consistent with uh, that anticipated change. And uh, from all descriptions in the written materials and the materials you just presented, Stan. Uh, does appear to meet the criteria in 281204 c 5 which is for review and approval of uh, amendments to planning and developments, as well as 284030. Uh, so I have no questions. Just looking at the criteria, all, at least all five of the factors seem to be plainly met, in my view. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else in the council? Questions? I just had a, a comment. Um, as Martin described, certainly this uh, complies with what was anticipated back when when things were adjusted to allow this um, I did a little digging around with some of the through the narrative some of the other referenced projects I think most of them were in Wisconsin um, and you know this is I'm glad this is happening please understand that it's a little underwhelming in my mind from what I'm seeing um, tie-ins to the rest of Esplanade um, there's a beautiful campus there and it feels a little bit um, a little cut and paste if I can say so and that's a little disappointing um, I'm glad to see the use of the site I think it's fantastic that we're doing this um, and I'm glad that the Hamilton Partners crew has decided to, to expand what they do a little bit because I think that's important to keep these office park sites healthy and vibrant um, but I'm a little disappointed um, that's probably not fair because I'm not the architect in the room Mike is um, but really I spent some time with the narrative in particular and uh, it was disappointing to essentially see what, what looked like sort of just a knockoff of the other sites so um, anybody from the audience have any questions comments okay one more time at the council anybody else uh, just I guess one Chris, question yeah thanks um, <coughs> so the subdivision with the open lot for future development has there been any discussion about whether or not this is um planned for uh multifamily or uh back to office the idea was uh, that this would be a parking deck with an office building okay preliminarily but again that's uh, not as part of this development sure. or petition okay thank you uh, for those watching at home, you may be familiar with the Esplanade um, area in town. There's some several office buildings there. Um, on the corner of Butterfield and 355 is is really not totally part of it, but that's where <coughs> excuse me, Cooper's Hawk is to give people a frame of reference. Uh, business parks and office parks over the years have um, traditionally been zoned kind of for one use and set up as developments intended to be a variety of office buildings. And as we've seen, things change. Um, whether they're entirely COVID driven or just changes over time they do and so last year we made some last year or two years ago we made some adjustments to our ordinance um, to this planning and development to allow for some expanded uses in this case residential uses in what has traditionally been an office park um, I think you'll probably see more of that as we all try and make the best use of the space we have so I'm, I'm excited to see the whole thing going forward and, and thankful that people are still expressing an interest in development and doubters. Back to you, Dave. The next item is an ordinance regarding the White Castle, generally located at 75th and Lamont, and Stan will present this item as well. Thank you, Manager Fielman. Good evening, Mayor and Council again. At 1204 75th Street, uh, down here on the south side of town by Lamont, 
and 75th Street is the White Castle restaurant here outlined in red. As you can see from the current site, there's a single drive through. Uh, what the petitioner is proposing to do is to create a double drive through on the south side of the building here. I add some uh, green space within the parking lots. Uh, what the existing access comes from within the shopping center itself. Uh, that will not be changing. Uh, the new drive throughs uh, will be on this uh, side in a counterclockwise motion. And we will have a pedestrian connection out to the sidewalk along Lamont Road as well. The comprehensive plan notes that this site is a corridor commercial property. It's part of the catalyst site for the larger uh, shopping center as a whole. Uh, this is a restaurant that will serve neighborhood and commercial customer base as noted in the comprehensive plan as a recommendation uh, for these restaurants in that area. Uh, the Planning Commission considered this petition at their January 22nd meeting and found that the standards for special use uh, were met and recommended approval. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, for you, Mayor and the Council. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stan. Council questions? I'm going to ignore Martin for a minute. I'll start. Mike. <laughs> uh, just great to see uh, White Castle doing uh, good business there. They obviously wouldn't be uh, putting in a second drive through if, if, if business wasn't robust. And that's good for all of us. So. Absolutely. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Martin. Thank you, Mayor. I was going to say, we always like to support any um, enhancement and improved activity at 75th in Lamont. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes we get a little creative and maybe a little bit cutting edge with the uh, uh, drive-throughs because we want to support that economic development. I am not at all concerned about this one. There's plenty of room for this one. Yeah. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah, this is. This is not the BP on that intersection. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the audience? Okay. Thanks, Thank Dan. And the final item on tonight's first reading agenda is an ordinance that would codify the no parking restrictions that have been approved temporarily at the staff level at a couple of locations on Washington, just south of Ogden, on Sherwood from Grant to Chicago, and on Bryan Grant Court. And this ordinance would also establish no parking restrictions on Granville and would modify parking regulations near Downers Grove South High School on streets like Bolson, Boundary Road, Boundary Court, Oxnard, and Stonewall. We'll be happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Thanks, Dave. Are there any questions from council? Mike. Um, so just curious, uh, uh, Springside and Brunette, as it comes off of, uh, off of uh, Bolson and then back on, um, similar, seems like a similar situation as, as, uh, as Oxnard. And I'm wondering what the what the restrictions are there, and if this would it be suitable for that. We'll, we will double check that particular area when we discuss this with our traffic and parking team at the staff level. Um, that we're looking to create consistency, mm -hmm. so, and there was a sort of a mix of parking restrictions in the area. So we'll double check that to make sure it's consistent with what we're looking to do. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, just a <clears throat> couple of comments. Um, and uh, I intend to support uh, this next week. Um, the Washington Street, uh, 200 feet from South Ogden, I happen to have a close uh, affinity to this intersection. Um, I, I think this is extremely smart use of, of no parking. We've got a um, mm -hmm. Napa Auto Parts, which is a great store and, and a great business partner here in town um, that has kind of an unusual parking lot uh, that allows for some in and out very close to the Ogden and Washington intersection. Uh, across the street is Firestone, another great uh, business, but uh, if there's anyone parked anywhere near that intersection with people turning, it, it, it can be pretty, uh, pretty hairy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I support that. Um, I'm also familiar with the Sherwood Avenue uh, to Grant. There was, we did some work on, on that street, some pretty extensive work. Um, and it looks great. Uh, the street was seemingly narrowed a bit. Um, just some, there was some gravel uh, shoulder that was removed in so many words. So um, to have parking on both sides of the street was, was really, really, really tight. So um, I feel very comfortable moving forward with this and think these are uh, in the best interest of the village. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Any comments or questions from the audience? Up to the mic, please. Oh, sorry. <coughs> the goal is to have people on TV hear you too. 
question is how far south on Washington Street is that 200 feet point that where there's no parking? Past my house? No. Just no. curious. Okay. Basically adjacent <laughs> to the business areas. Yeah. Oh, just up there at, yeah. the, at the intersection? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll stake it out for you tonight when I get home. <laughs> I'm for it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Anyone else? All right. That ends our first reading tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. Only three items tonight. The first is an ordinance approving amendment to Plan Unit Develop 31 to construct a multi-family residential development. An ordinance authorizing a special use for 1204 75th Street to permit a second drive-through. And an ordinance amending certain parking provisions within Chapter 14. That's all. They'll all be on next week's active agenda, Mayor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I uh, do not have a mayor's report tonight, so we'll go on to council member reports. This is the portion meeting where council members report out on other goings on in town or groups they're working with on various issues or things they think we all ought to know about. So we'll, uh, we'll just look right and start left. Mark, you have anything tonight? No report, Mayor. Chris? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Greg? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Mike? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy no. Valentine's Day. Danny. Not just to the mayor. No report, mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No report, mayor. Thank Sorry. you. Just finish out. Yeah, it. It's just to the mayor. That film of love. You know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. No report, mayor. Thank you. All right. Um, we have some more meeting, but we are going to do the rest of this meeting as we have been doing quite frequently over in our committee room. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of our Fairview Avenue business district related stuff. So we'll adjourn here briefly. We'll reconvene over there in about five minutes or so, and you're all welcome to join us. Thanks for being here. All right. Welcome to the committee room. We're going to reconvene here. Um, thanks those of us who joined from the audience for coming on over with us there tonight. We are going to continue our conversation of the Fairview Business District, uh, your Fairview Avenue implementation plan. Uh, tonight we've got some additional sort of development, if you will, of some of the things we've been talking about, uses and, and land uh, related entitlements and how that looks on paper. Uh, we also, you also have some draft kind of use tables, which starts to look a little bit more like an ordinance. And so tonight we're going to talk through that stuff. We're going to see if we all like the way it looks now that we see it on paper and, uh, and entertain any questions we might have. So, Stan, over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening again, Mayor, Council, audience members. Uh, I think the Mayor stole my first uh, slide here. So we're, we're good to go. We're moving forward here. We'll talk a little bit about the project description. Uh, look at the map again. Uh, as it's the Mayor's point, talk about some bulk regulations and then get into some land uses as well. Uh, this project consists of, of these various bullets here. Again, we talked in the past about this is a multi-year project. Uh, tonight, moving forward in the short term, we're talking about defining the project area and amendments to the zoning ordinance and the zoning map as well. Uh, how do we get from the comprehensive plan to the zoning ordinance? Again, we talk about the comp plan being a visionary document, regulatory framework, key concepts, and zoning ordinance where it's really uh, uh, nuts and bolts. Uh, we're here tonight again at the regulatory <coughs> framework to talk about key concepts of uh, discussion and concurrence. This is uh, the Fairview focus area map. Uh, you may recognize it. We've been using this for a while. A couple of things that have changed uh, since our last meeting. Uh, Fairview 1 is in the blue, Fairview 2 is green, and Fairview 3 is yellow. So this blue area, uh, we have extended that uh, over towards more of the maple and the train track intersection. So we've included these triangle pieces there uh, from off of Fairview Avenue. We've moved the green off, so we think this area could go as Fairview 1. Additionally, in past maps, if you see the Rogers Street area here, I think the green extended over potentially into the north side of Rogers. That's been moved back, so the so Rogers Street would in essence be the dividing line. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that on Austin there's some single family homes, so we thought that was important to move that line uh, south so that Rogers would be the dividing line which we see a lot of those different zoning districts as the street being that change in the zoning district. Other than that, the map has stayed the same with some overlap here where we're looking at different areas to still try to explore some ideas on those areas. So uh, to the mayor's point, we did sort of start developing some uh, framework ideas here. Uh, Fairview 1, again, is more of a downtown area. So I'll go ahead and go through the Fairview 1 section and we'll come to Fairview 2. And then the next slide, we'll get into uh, some, some other items as well. So maximum height in the Fairview 1, uh, we're looking at 60 feet or five stories. We do want to have a minimum height in there where we're going to create sort of a downtown streetscape, street wall location. 
so 24 feet or two stories. Uh, we talked about a height bonus, it's not applicable here. Uh, setbacks, because we do want a downtown type feel, there's no setback street side or rear. However, uh, if you are adjacent to an F3 or R, R zone property, the street setback will be 25 feet for the first, first 35 feet of that property. There's a graphic that explains this, but basically, if you're on, a, on an adjacent property line, the first 35 feet adjacent to the property line would have to have a setback, so you're not putting a building upright at the property line. Similarly, when we're on a side yard, it's five feet or 10% allowed with if you're adjacent to an F3 or R to allow some sort of setback. And then again, if, if there's a back-to-back -back with an F1, F1, F3, or residential, there's a 20-foot setback. That's a standard setback throughout town uh, as a 20-foot rear setback. Uh, we talked about a build-to zone previously. So yes, we would want to build-to zone. Uh, it's generally, you can build at the property line or up to five feet back. 80% of the building has to be in the build-to zone in the primary street setback. So on a corner, it's usually defined primary and secondary, and 30% on the uh, secondary street. So if you just have one street frontage, you would meet the 80% here. Mm -hmm. We do have some graphics that explain this a little bit better with some 3D modeling uh, that hopefully uh, bring that all to life. So that's the Fairview One. We're really looking at that to be the downtowns or a street wall, really active uh, areas. Fairview Two, if you remember the map, sort of stretches out along Rogers and Second Street there. So in this case, it's 48 feet, four stories. So we're trying to step down to standard zoning, taller, higher, denser there, and then coming back down. No minimum here, so a one-story building could work for a, a user. Uh, and then we talked about a height bonus here. So we went with 60 feet or five stories, which would bring it to the Fairview One. But again, this would be as if you were adjacent um, uh, to portions of the building that are set back at least a half the lot depth. So you have a 300 foot, foot deep lot, the last 150 feet couldn't there be five stories, 60 feet. Again, with setbacks, uh, you know, zero for the street, we're still looking for that building to be close to the property line. A little bit of a setback here on the sides and again on the rear because we're getting more into not as intense areas there. Again, uh, this also comes down to adjacency. We talked about this being more locational. Um, so we're looking at, you know, if you're adjacent to an F3, then again, there's a 25 foot setback to try to allow some of that to move through your neighbors. Adjacent to F1, no side yard setback would be required. So that can be a street wall, street wall area. And then if you're adjacent here with the railroad tracks, uh, no rear setback. So you can build as close. Uh, now, obviously, the building code comes into this and what you're allowed for opening. So there are some, some items there as well. But for zoning, those are sort of the setbacks we're looking at. Build two zones, similarly, yes, but there's a little bit more allowance to set the building back up to 10 feet for the property line, and then similar 80 to 30%. So those are Fairview one and two with height setbacks in the build two zone. Uh, when we go to density, uh, so if you wanted to, what, what can I build if I want to build apartments? It's 54 per acre, so with Marquee on Maple, is it 54? That's on Maple Avenue. Uh, and then is there a density bonus? So staff is exploring a density bonus for inclusive housing. Uh, it's something we have to work through to see how that works. Uh, we really wanted to make it a, a zoning type of, of uh, density bonus. Uh, parking is in the F1 would be a 1.4 per apartment. Again, that's consistent with the requirements that are in downtown. Uh, no parking spaces for businesses in this area. There is a fair amount of parking available on street and in some of the lots that the village owns that would be available for businesses. And then with design guidelines, we've had success in the downtown with our design guidelines. Um, so yes, new buildings. So if you were to come in and redevelop, uh, that would have to comply with the downtown design guidelines. But we think it's also important if people want to reinvest that we're not uh, limiting them in terms of their ability to be creative with their buildings. And the F2, again, sort of the model of going higher density in the middle and less dense out, <coughs> 43 units per acre. Uh, so the uh, apartment building that is just immediately west of Fishel Park is 42 dwelling units per acre, and then 49, 29 Forest, which is north side of the tracks on the forest on the east side of the street, that's 46 dwelling units per acre. So, uh, and then again, bulk of the building and size of the building has a lot to depend on whether the studios or two or three bedroom units. Uh, but those are some examples. Again, density bonus there. Parking spaces, we were again 1.4 uh, per apartment. We're finding that that's really good in the downtown to meet those numbers and provide parking. And then we were looking at to try to um, not have to have people worry about providing so much parking because that takes up a lot of space um, and try to re really reinvigorate this area. So we had uh, discussed 1.5 parking spaces per 1,000 square feet 
of commercial space in essence uh, that would just be a standard thing and then also to try to encourage some sort of entertainment uh, one one per eight occupants for assembly or entertainment uses so again not requiring a lot of parking here trying to reinvigorate the area and not limit investment opportunities based on parking uh, with design guidelines um, no requirements for that again we want that investment in that area not to uh, try to try to uh, inhibit any investment that people might be making in the area so that gets us through density parking and design guidelines uh, this is a density table and a parking data table so we can share sort of what what's been going on uh, dash which was recently built is 124 units 70 feet tall it's parked at 1.4 uh, again these were the two that I had mentioned uh, about the 43 units and similar to F2 and then some of the nearby ones so Prospect and Rogers is right across the tracks here that is 27 units per acre that's in the downtown transition which requires two parking spaces per unit so they provided that and then second and Fairview is a recent development which is 18 units 34 feet in height and two spaces per unit as well um, so that that's all the parking and the density and some height uh, for some comparisons mm -hmm. uh, to what we're talking about tonight so I wanted to talk a little bit about the build to zone uh, just to clarify uh, some items on that so this is the current regulations in the downtown uh, uh, zoning districts so uh, 100 feet of building you're allowed an outdoor patio that's 30 feet wide or 33 percent of the facade whichever is less um, so in our graphic we put it over here in the corner you put it in the middle you can put it on the side wherever you want it in the front but we've just identified it here so this would meet our uh, compliance the the understanding is that this outdoor patio is open to the sky um, so that's one of the key things we want to make sure uh, to talk about tonight mm -hmm. so this is what's allowed it is allowed there's some different options if this is something the council and the community wishes to to look at would be to be able to expand potentially this width and say okay you can be 50 feet wide if you wanted to be or 40 feet or if there's a percentage that's something we can work through and develop again the important thing here with the current regulations is is you can only go back 25 feet so that maintains somewhat of the street wall here uh, but you know if it's something that a council wanted to explore and go wider that's something we can definitely talk about and take a look at one other option would be to say okay well maybe you keep the width the same but you allow it to go deeper so maybe it's 30 feet maybe it's 50 feet so this rectangle we can work through that based on discussion community desires and council desires to see how it can go so we can really play with this rectangle in terms of how we want it to show so this is a graphic here a really quick graphic that we're using uh, with SketchUp uh, Jason did these for us so really great job on this this is a which is currently allowed so again you can see this is a hundred foot wide from there to there oops uh, but then we have this 30 foot opening this is B which has a 50 foot wide opening and then C which has sort of the courtyard feel uh, in that way so some different options and different views about how this could look as well if we went with some different options here again these are the buildings at their maximum height so you know some people might not build that tall but this would be what we'd be looking at in terms of how these would lay out with the street walls uh, we did have a, a question about an outdoor patio that may be underneath the facade underneath the building and looking at our code this would be actually allowed where the outdoor patio is underneath sort of a, a facade on the second third and fourth floors here so this would be allowed by current code today so in this picture here you see people eating outside but underneath the uh, roof you know the floor of the second floor so this would be allowed and could continue to remain to be allowed then as well so and then we talked a little bit about the Fairview 2 and the height bonus here earlier so again this is another graphic here showing the street here the first hundred well this is 150 foot wide 150 foot deep flat as shown so the first 75 feet would be uh, four stories tall and then the last 75 feet could be five stories tall there so just trying to show a little stair stepping down if the road tracks were in the back here as well and then this is what an f1 and f2 building adjacent could look like um so you know if we look at the maple avenue once redeveloped there's always a little bit of, there's a little bit of space between the buildings for some uh, safety and, and and just building close to property lines so this is sort of the massing of those two buildings next to each other there as well and then I will after we talk about f3 requirements a little bit we'll go into the f1 to f3 and the f2 against the f3 as well so moving to the f3 this is reading more like a traditional residential zoning classification as we heard from council at the last meeting that this should be more typical residential type development 
in here as well. So maximum height is 35 feet. That's what it is throughout the community for single family residential. No minimum, no height bonus. Setbacks, streets 25, sides are five feet or 10%, 20 feet, all standard for most of our residential zoning classifications. No built to zone here. So this again is gonna have a feel of a residential neighborhood with redevelopment or reinvestment. Uh, density is four per acre. That's our current, current standards here. No density bonus. Parking spaces in residential is always two outside of the downtown areas. Again, no parking spaces for business because what we heard was we don't really want businesses to infiltrate into this area in the F3. And then no design guidelines. So uh, build, build whatever uh, design you would like for your house to be. So when we look at F1 and F3 adjacency on these, um, this is a typical you know, taller building in the F1 here. And then this would be a standard 35 foot tall uh, peak to the gable there. So you can see here in this example, we have a little bit of a setback here where the first 35 feet of the F1 building has to meet this 25 foot setback line. Um, so again, that sort of provides that sort of buffer there or change uh, to provide so it's not right up to the corner there. And again, this house, the billable area is this area, so this house could be up or down or front or back here as well. And this building is shown pretty much maxed out uh, in terms of sizes with the dimensions as well. The next one would be F2 to F3. Again, we see the, the setback here from this front facade. And then here in this example, you can see the step back, assuming this is a, a longer railroad tracks there as well. And then getting into a little bit of the uses that we talked about at the last meetings and tonight, uh, what we heard from council, the direction was all these residential housing types that are in the F3. This is exclusively on the F3. So I just wanted to talk about that, that we have our detached single family house with a detached garage, attached single, single family house with an attached garage, a duplex and a multifamily, all okay in the F3 is what we heard last time from the village council. When we talked about residential accessory uses and structures, um, this is a, allowed currently under the code, the extended family within the house. But we heard there might be some openness to expanding it to a uh, potentially a detached garage uh, or potentially expanding the size. But what we did here was, was the council direction at the last meeting was to not provide an opportunity for me to own the house and to rent uh, the house out of the backyard, the back garage to a coworker or a friend. So it was really about some sort of a family connection there as well so what uh, the proposal would be would be to expand the family member eligibility right now it's limited to elderly folks or people with disabilities but maybe we need to look at expanding it to a college kid coming home or an aunt or an uncle or some other family member or household member allow the unit to be in a detached accessory structure and potentially expand the allowable size um, makes the allowable accessory structure Right now is a thousand square feet, so that's something we could look at and maybe explore if it was part of the house as well. So there's some options, but these are the uh, framework there as well. Then we talked about home occupation concepts. So right now, currently allowed is, is there's a, a space limit and a size limit for home occupation, but maybe we could, based on last council discussions, expand the size of it, and maybe we allow it to occur in a detached structure as well. Um, so that's what uh, staff heard from the last council meeting, uh, where these three options might move, be able to move forward as well to expand those options. Um, so using that, we would be looking at increasing the allowable size of the home occupation. We still want it to be a home occupation, so um, I couldn't own the home and, and allow Dave to work out of it at the, at the house and you know, have an office there, uh, but it would have to be somebody that's an occupant of the home having a home occupation, and we would still want to keep it as an accessory unit so we don't really want it to become the primary focus of that housing unit, the F3. Uh, allow the accessory home occupations to be in a detached accessory structure. Uh, we did hear about allow multiple employees, but maybe limit the number of employees that can be on site. A lot of people are working remotely, so maybe you have three employees, but they all work remote, and one at a time they come into the office at different times or something like that. And then to look at it, allow additional service uses as well, so expand the use of allowable uses but however, limit with no retail, no restaurant. So really sort of um, we're trying to limit the impacts on the neighborhood while still expanding the uses and the allowable uses. So those were extended family and the home occupation. Uh, so then as the mayor alluded to, staff uh, took council direction and looked at a couple different things uh, with this, this getting more into the zoning of the, of the uh, areas and what uses would be allowed. So we see 
what we're trying to be is more permissive. That's one of the main key points that we've had in this whole process to be more permissive to allow um, some more energy to occur in this area. So we talk about in the F1 here, allow apartments on the second floor as a special use and special use in the F2, <coughs> but then permitted in the F3. And then we got some group livings here and nursing homes in the F2 and F3 as well. So trying to be more permissive. Um, and then we have our zoning definitions over here and then I, we tried to provide some uh, more layman's terms in terms of understanding that sometimes it gets a little nuanced. Um, and then we have different land uses here, public, civic, and institutional. So again, a lot of these are carrying across with special uses as well. So again, we all know that those would have to come before council. But then permitting some of these natural resource preservation museum, uh, safety schools, and some of these wireless and utility services as well. Then we get into more of the traditional things, uh, things there. So animal services, we were talking about being more permissive with boarding and grooming and veterinary care, and they have one of twos. Assembly and entertainment, again, that was something we heard. We're more permissive here in these areas. So this could be a bowling alley, an arena, a billiard center, a broadcast or recording studios, which are really about audio and video productions. Uh, and then we get into commercial services. So uh, we did keep contractors uh, as a prohibited use in those areas. But again, we did pr provide business support services and consumer maintenance repair. So these business support are caterers, co copy shops, I don't know if there's any Kinkos anymore, but uh, you know those those type of places, uh, and then dry cleaners, locksmiths, and so so more of the more of the maintenance and stuff like that that we're seeing. And then we get into personal improvement services. So general are really barber, beauty salons, nail salons, health and fitness, which are yoga studios, uh, studio instructionals. This is to be music education, artist studios more permitted, uh, fortune telling, massage therapy, tattoo. Uh, research services or research and testing labs in office settings. So not really um, a large research area, but more in an office, smaller office setting there as well. We do have daycare centers would be allowed in the F1, but special in the F2. Home daycares in the F3. Uh, restaurants, wine and beer boutiques cover a lot of things. Uh, bed and breakfast is a special use in the F3 as well. So we're really trying to be more permissive, so we hope you see more P's and S's in these areas as well. Uh, to try to get some different uses in this area. Uh, continuing to move down, we have a lot of the same with business professional, medical office, dental offices, convenience good, that's grocery store, drug store, so that's with people who are living there, they're gonna wanna stop, pick up a gallon of milk. Uh, consumer shopping goods are department stores, electronics store, hobby shops permitted. And then we have building supplies and equipment, which are hardware stores, and then trade schools, which can be cosmetology school to vocational school. So really trying to be permissive in this area as best we can. Uh, some of these, like convenience good and shopping good, have some limitations in the downtown core and the downtown transition. But since we're trying to be permissive, we had not uh, identified any limitations at this point. Uh, as we move down the zoning use table, land use table, uh, we heard clear vehicle sales and sort of vehicle auto oriented uses, not. And same thing with some of the wholesale distribution and storage as well. Uh, the one thing we did here was Artesian Industrial, which would be permitted in the F1 and F2, trying to provide that more opportunity for some of those spaces as well. Um, so the brewery, cabinet shop, ceramic studio. So that runs through our, our land uses. I believe, nope, one more. Again, no auto uses, so that's drive throughs no. Adult use cannabis, medical cannabis, no, and those are the industries as well. Uh, so next steps, obviously, discussion tonight. Uh, we'll work at the council's direction, council pace. Uh, but this could be a potential uh, schedule. You know, if we have a, a good discussion tonight, we're going to move forward. Uh, direct staff to do that. Uh, the village is working on a fair to be focused implementation plan webpage for the public. Uh, we could go through ordinances of preparation, have council review them, and then we would begin the public hearing process, open houses for folks uh, and impacted by this plan, and then come back through the planning commission and through the village council to approve any changes. Mayor, I think I've talked enough right now, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much. Just Just time quick, some guy behind you just stood up. Right. Oh. Um, got it right? Not yeah. a lot of stuff there. No big deal. We got this. So if you're watching this or participating at home, you think, oh, that's a lot of information. It is. Keep in mind that staff spend 60 to 90 minutes in meetings with individual council members, so they're not hearing this for the first time. Uh, that's why Stan was able to go through it so quickly. Um, we're looking for direction on anything in here. There's the map, right? There's the bulk density setback concepts. We got parking concepts.
we've got the build to zone, and then we have land uses. So with that frame up, Mayor, maybe that would be a little helpful as you try to guide us through this discussion. It is helpful. Uh, so our individual meetings, our previous meetings in this room on this, this is an attempt at kind of coalescing that into a next step towards towards an ordinance, as we mentioned early. And so if really the first thing is to, to sort of circle back with this group and see if anything jumps out um, that we need either additional clarification on or, man, that's not the way I think I remember hearing it, that kind of a thing, that's the purpose of tonight. Uh, so anybody want to, let's, let's go, let's work through what Dave's got up there one section at a time simply because one of the benefits of all of us being together is we hear what each other has to say right so if somebody says something about a map somebody else might trigger a map let's let's focus on one at a time so relative to the map does anybody have any reactions or things they want to bring up kind of related to the map. what i said a little bit related to the map it's kind of a combo of the so I have just kind of written down, thinking about like those F1, F3 spots where those intersect and kind of seeing the image of, you mm -hmm. know, the taller building next to the, the house. And it does remind me a lot of the recent Main Street discussion that we had with the residential towards the back. And it, it just felt a little bit intrusive. So I don't know that I have an answer for it right now, but it does make me a little bit uncomfortable of how much one and three overlap there is. It's much more than we have with the downtown. Uh, downtown business to, you know, what would pretty much be a residential, right? Like skipping the transition. It seems like there's a lot of spot there that has a lot of one and three overlap. And it just gives me a little bit of pause when thinking about having those taller buildings next to a small single family home. Mm -hmm. I have a comment so, related to that as well. So go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, just so this gets us not off. This I think I'd be taking us more off the map if I address that. So we just want to get through the yeah, map. Yeah, let's get through the map. I, yeah, I, I was kind of thinking about it in the build two zone uh, category. But yeah. yeah, I've got comments on the same sort. Of We're definitely going to get to that. I know. There's it's, a, it's a several conversations right. starting here on that subject. Uh, right. What about map lines for the moment? But that, that's why, like, that's where I'm like, do we need to readjust maybe some of where we have to, I, you know, I... One of the, let me jump in. I had some very similar thoughts. I think you're on the right thing. One thing I thought was we had made this sort of adjustment to Rogers, using Rogers as a little bit of a delineation, and I wonder if we shouldn't be doing the same thing on second. Yeah. Uh, I'm change the screen, but, you know, we pulled back F2 to really the south side of Rogers, and I'm wondering if that would be limited to, over here, it would be limited to the north side of second. It, it, for that very yeah, reason, right? right? If you start exactly. doing an F2, right, yeah. sort of right up against an R4, or whatever those might yeah. be. It, it, there are other, other ways to address the concern, though. Yeah. Which Maybe. I will get to. Yeah, I've got a thought on that, too. We might be on the same wavelength there. I, I think I, this, you know, resident of the south side of Austin Street really appreciates using Rogers as that yeah. line of demarcation. I, th I think that was a, a nice change. Um, and I, I'm, I'm open to the idea on 2nd Street there, but uh, I think perhaps some, some of the other ideas might ameliorate the concerns. <clears throat> Can I just have a question of clarity? Yeah, you bet. There is no real overlap. The only overlap is on this cloud based right. photo. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is intentionally a cloud mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> it becomes a hard line. I am pro yeah. clouds. I just want to go on record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, the, I guess the, it, it does make it, it gives a little false sense of right. them being closer than they right. maybe but are. The roads. The street. Yeah. It, exact, I mean, it's going to be a street likely that's, 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 that's right where it's going to go. I think everybody's kind of talking around the same yeah. things and this is where yeah. I haven't been in a planner in a long time stand. So if I get this wrong, please sure. jump in. But I think the idea is a combination of where the one would meet a three mm -hmm. and as it relates to height and setbacks. So mm -hmm. if we end up doing a map where there's always a street in between, would that address the Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think, you, you know, as we're talking, there's a, there's a lot of overlap up here. I don't think that we've explored that in terms right. of that. Right. But to uh, Manager Fieldman's point, if it's a street, then it's a little yeah. bit yes. better of a transition. Yes. 
but yeah, I just wanted to get that out early. <laughs> I mean, up in that corner where you were just pointing, Stan, there, I mean, there's some overlap in terms of the colors, to be sure, but when you think about the properties that are on that corner, mm -hmm. yeah. I have zero concern. Yeah. I mean, you've got you know, already multi-story, multi-family yeah. there, right. as well as stuff that ought to be multi-story. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it should be redeveloped. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. That, 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 to me, is a non-issue. But yeah. as we tighten this map up and move towards zoning, if the, if the concern was the incompatibility of height bulk setback yeah. between F1 and F3, if there's a street between, we're good. Yes. Okay, got it. Any other map related questions? We'll just keep walking down Dave's list. Is that uh, that density? Density and setbacks, okay. those slides. Bulk density, you want to continue? It's yeah, I mean, I appreciate kinda... the flexibility with, with this part um, of one <coughs> having, you know, a potential height bonus in, in Fairview, too, right, if you're backing up to the tracks, because yeah. why, why not, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, you know, again, this does kind of help to ameliorate some of those issues when we see those step down. So I think that this was a really creative approach, and I like all of that. Um, and, yeah, I think that's... I'm, I'm good with this. I think I think it was a really great creative use of. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. So a uh, few things off the bat. Um, uh, first of all, footnote three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that should also apply to F two rear yards. So adjacent to F3 or yeah. R zone property, it was 20 foot setback. I think this, I think we want the same thing with the rear yard in, in the Fairview 2 okay. situation. That's uh, my feelings. Yeah. Um, uh, I also feel like uh, when we look at some of these, um, looking at the, the adjacencies between the F1, F2, adjacent to F3 or our district zones, um, that we ought to consider some sort of height limitation. Um, uh, when you're, when you're you know, at least kind of similar to what we're doing with the bulk um, or the build to zone on the, mm -hmm. on the street side, that we do something that's basically for so many feet back from that property line adjoining that, that F3 or residential zone district, that there's uh, a 35 foot height limitation similar to what you have okay. in the F3 mm -hmm. or the R zoning. Setback, the, height tied to setback. So it's kind of, right? yeah, so mm -hmm. kind of the concept is similar to when we looked at in the, uh, when we're looking at the F2, that bonus going, if you go back halfway, you can go higher. Well, I'm saying kind of the reverse of that. Reverse of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you get that stand jump on? Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I, so I think, mm -hmm. I think if I, Commissioner, if I can. Yeah. So where we have a height bonus here, if for the back half of F2 when you hit adjacent to the tracks, mm -hmm. you're saying almost the opposite. So if, if you're at 60 feet here, but you're adjacent, and if you're F1, and, and you're 60 feet here, mm -hmm. but you're adjacent to an F, beat back to back, then so many feet or back, you can only go down to, th you can only go 35 yeah. feet mm -hmm. in height. Or if you're alongside. Yeah, side, side setbacks too, like that, right? right? I was thinking the very same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's really about, it's really about the intensity and the height being furthest away from those F3 or residential zoning and potentially F2 as well. We used to think yes. about this too in terms of daylighting, right? If you, drew, right. If you kind of drew an angle line from the mm -hmm. property line, trying to, trying to, so you're not totally blocking off the right. sure. property, you know, backyards and such. Um, yeah. So, so that was, that was um, something I, I'm interested in. Um, uh, um, so I'm wondering if the 35 foot width um, for the street um, setback widths um, with the adjacencies. How do we come up with that 35? That's what's in the existing zoning ordinance for the downtown. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That carve out the notch thing. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I just I wonder where that what that was rooted in. Um, and then um, let's see. Uh, consider. We're not in the build two zone yet. I'm just looking to make sure we get a few things here. Um, I think I think that's I think that's it for me right now. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. So I I think I need a little more clarity on, on what was just proposed before I can 
get behind it. Can you go to the slide with the <coughs> Monopoly Hotel next to the? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a technical love, term. It's I a love, technical I term. Love, Davenport. I love it. That was good. So, are we suggesting that up to 35 feet, the height of the blue building would have to match the height of the red building? Up to 35 feet on the it's, side. It's kind of work. Some, it, some distance yeah, in from the right. property line. Yeah. Yeah. So that building could go all the way up, but it couldn't go all the way up until it got farther into its own property. And, okay. Step back some before it can go up. I think what Commissioner Davenport was saying was was these, I'll just say these two and a half blocks here wouldn't be allowed, but if you extend this facade sure. back, oops, yeah. Yeah. this yeah. facade yeah. back here, yes. that part could be taller, but this part would have to be more. So, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I, the clarity right. of... It's also off the street at that. So this one demonstrates that there's a 35 foot setback from the front that matches the the residential or the house there, right? Correct. So it's it's 25 feet from the property line back because sorry, yep, yeah, 25 and then it's back. 35 feet also okay. east to west <clears throat> in this case. And so the addition would be theoretically <laughs> at the height restriction that is the similar to that. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that makes sense. And also, so, Stan, sticking with the, the height piece, um, along the, the train tracks, there are some fairly decent grade changes. Um, mm -hmm. I think just for everybody's edification, mm -hmm. could you walk through what, you know, how tall you could go um, as you would see it from the street uh, versus where it might end up uh, deeper down by the train tracks? So. So the village's height requirements are measured from the street property line. So if it's a corner, let's say let's say this for example is a street, we would measure the three corners and determine height. So if but in this case, let's just say this is another F1 over here, F1 and F3, we measure it still from the street here. But if the grade slopes down, you in theory could see another level sort of below grade. So off the railroad tracks, if it was if the if the street's higher and the railroad tracks are lower, you might see a one, two, three, four, five, like a, a six-story building off the back there as well. So, like, uh, for example, if you park in the downtown parking deck mm -hmm. and you look at Marquis on Maple on, mm -hmm. you know, looking south from the parking deck, you will see it's taller in the back because there's a garage, but because the village measures height from the street, that's where the height's measured from. So, that answer your question? Absolutely. Thank you. I, I agree with the stuff that uh, we're talking about here. I'll just remind, not you, because you already remember, so does Greg. Um, but some of our biggest challenges over the years have been this daylighting issue, and they've been sort of driven by existing zoning, right? So this is kind of our chance to reflect some of those things that we maybe learned uh, and wish had been a little different at the time. And, and I love the description of daylighting, because that's really what we're talking about, trying to not create the house and up. Were we talking about um, the design guidelines in, in this section or no? Oh, well, we should add one, right? Let's talk about design guidelines. Well, well, I couldn't remember where we where I missed it, in, it so. in the presentation. But um, I was I was thinking that because it says new buildings only, right, for Fairview mm -hmm. One, and I'm wondering if we wouldn't want to um, actually apply it to say if somebody's um, renovating a substantial part of their facade, that, that you reach a certain point where you where you maybe say 50% of it's being affected. You want to say, okay, now you've kind of crossed into. Um, I want you to follow the design guidelines. O only in F1, Mike. Yeah, so only in F1. Okay. So major remodels in F1. Yeah. Yeah. Don't the guidelines currently have a? Some parameters around when they apply and when they don't. Yes. So uh, with remodels in the downtown, uh, you have to. There's certain triggers. So it's um, you have to be applicable for. You have to re a permits required. So if you're painting it, we're, we're not going to require you to come through. Uh, so it, that's the first trigger. Is if a permit's required, then it's changing window or door openings. So you're changing sort of the facade or windows getting bigger or smaller or being removed. A change in roof um, structure, so maybe going from a gable to a hip or a gable to a flat roof, or a change in height. 
I believe those are the triggers. Yeah, but you're not changing building materials. And changing the building materials as well. So just to be clear, um, great explanation of what's required downtown. This was, for per discussion purposes, purposely less restrictive, right? Yeah. We're proposing that it doesn't do what Stan just said, that it's only for new buildings. I'm, I'm okay with being less restrictive, um, but I still think that there's a, there's, there's a point at which you've, you've crossed the line and, and we ought to be following it. So you're saying yeah. major remodels for the, the, the However we want to define it, whether it's something similar to what's currently downtown or something different. I don't think I'd want to be as restrictive as downtown. Just changing the door, door openings or roofs or things like that to me are not would not, for, in my opinion, be enough to trigger it. But I can see what he's saying. Like if you're renovating the facade, eighty percent of the facade of the building, well, yeah, at this point you're not really using the, you know, the existing structure anymore. So I, I don't know what that would look like. But I, I understand what you're saying. I can see somebody deciding to leave the facade in place and building. It's, yeah, it's crazy things like that. Things yeah, we architects. Do to get around, you know, requirements. <laughs> we so. definitely uh, yeah. could you yeah. could yeah. you um, between now and whenever we meet again drag out the minutes associated with some of that conversation, the trigger conversations with the current For design sure. guidelines. Uh, that was we're doing this because Commissioner Colvaney's here tonight, so that's why we're having this. <laughs> well, there was a lot of round and round, and that was yeah. you know I, I'm my inclination at this point is I'm still focused more on less restrictive than yeah. on conformance yeah um, but I want to refresh myself a little bit to those previous conversations Chris yeah I think I would just add to that. <coughs> I think um, I, I agree less re restrictive um, I guess I just am curious if the downtown guidelines are really something we can apply to this I mean the downtown has many buildings if i remember because i and i do remember that guidelines conversation because candidly it was the first discussion uh, that i was a part of as on the council um so at that time i was reading everything <laughs> um but i i feel like the 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 number of buildings and the investment in the area it's it, it sort of you know the guidelines point to similar colors and similar style of, of the buildings and we have an area of Fairview that doesn't have a whole lot so I, I guess I just wonder if if it's an applicable document certainly I assume some of the intent of it is good but I would be worried to tie it to the downtown guidelines because I think it's a I think it potentially could be and potentially we may want it to be uh, something a bit different. Not to say that you know it's going to be crazy. I, I I don't know. I just I'm I'm a little concerned with saying the the downtown guidelines should apply uh, on this. And I appreciate the effort that it's new buildings only, but in some ways I feel like that may add to some of the mismatch or the the, the lack of I don't want to say conformity because I know that's not what we're looking for here, but. Um, you don't want to detract from an eclectic look. Yeah, that for sure. Nice. That for sure. Um, yeah, I just I guess I'll just say I'm not sure they apply to that. It's the same thing. So, see, and I, I think I would go a little bit in the opposite direction. I, the eclecticness might be a little much right now. I think I'd like a little more cohesion. I don't, I'm not necessarily saying that the downtown guidelines are where mm -hmm. we need to be, mm -hmm. but. It'd, it'd be nice if it, yeah, was a little more cohesive. I'll, I'll stick with that word. So it sounds like I'll jump in here. Uh, if we're looking for further discussions at the next meeting with maybe a little more meat on the bones in the staff presentation, it looks like we've come across our, our first one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The applicability of design guidelines mm -hmm. is uh, next next mm -hmm. time we meet, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That way Stan and Jason and Flora and Emily can do their thing. That's great. Right back. Yep. Yeah. That tool. Parking. Let's move on to parking. Thoughts on parking? None, Greg. Yeah. I mean, I, I get where we're going with it. I just I will want to tap the brake slightly because um, getting pretty familiar with overflow uh, from Goldfinger when they've got big events, which is great when it's just 
one business doing it, mm -hmm. um, but it gets a little different if we're going to see more and more developments like that in the area. Um, you know, it's it, Rogers gets to be kind of tough anyway when you've got traffic going in both directions and a lot of people parked along uh, the uh, the south side of it. Um, you know, the the conflicts become pretty strong. Uh, so I'm just thinking that next to the residential neighborhoods, it, it could get a little crazy. Uh, I want us to be mindful of that move forward. So I wrote down F2 because I heard you talking about F2, but are you, are, you, are you more concerned, not so much with F2, but parking requirements when it's adjacent to a residential neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, that, that's really my concern. Is it, it's one thing when it's the occasional spillover into six, seven, eight, nine blocks of the neighborhood. It's another thing when if, if it's something that could happen day after day after day after day. Other thoughts? Everybody else okay with mm -hmm. the concepts? Yeah, the, the adjacency yeah. thing I think is going to, is really kind of where a lot of our <coughs> sorting is going to have to end up, right? Because it's, we know that's the biggest issue. And so parking's, uh, parking's definitely one of them. But that adjacency thing is a challenge. We've talked in previous meetings about people's expectations about moving into a neighborhood, you know. And, and to some degree, we got to figure out a way to respect those and still mm -hmm. still get more permissive. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, Mayor, are you saying? Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's a concern. I don't have a, a solution to tell you to try and put into a table. But I think those adjacency issues, whether it's parking or it's density or it's height or it's setbacks, are, are all going to be kind of the thing that keeps rearing its head here. So some of that's going to place way out with the uses. Absolutely. Because there's going to be a lot of uses that you could put in there that aren't going to have those events. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at the conversation we had a month ago over by um, O'Neill the, between the Y and the junior high and you know, all the parking that spills into the streets mm -hmm. pretty much every month happens all the time and I, some of it is going back to expectations if you're living in that neighborhood and you've got those institutions or you're in a place where there's going to be uh, uh, commercial establishments of that nature then to some degree your expectations are managed right the expectations can change over time uh, as residents turn over right. as businesses turn over right it's just something to, to I'm not saying we should necessarily change the, the no. parking requirements that are proposed right a lot of it's going to be the, mindful one is good, yeah. of course I think more of it's going to be driven by the use than mm -hmm. the parking requirements. Absolutely. And farther down the road in this thing, it also might start to inform what we do mm -hmm. with our spaces. Mm -hmm. that's maybe, yeah. you know, maybe that's the infrastructure that helps the whole thing. Right. So what I'm interpreting, and anybody in staff <coughs> up in if we're hearing it wrong, is that we can, once you tell us to go from framework to zoning, we're, we're good at using this as the basis. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're locked into it. It just mm -hmm. means yes. keep going down this route. Okay. Yep. With the parking regs that are out there. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Build two. This is where most of the conversation on the board was focused on the front side of stuff. <laughs> Chris is dying. Well, Jump I'm in. Not dying. I just I do have a question. Um, just need some clarity the the one you showed with the outdoor kind of under the roof mm -hmm. um, would they all would that also be allowed to have a 30-foot non um, roofed space mm -hmm. I don't yes know how to say. okay yeah yeah because the way we, we went back and this question came up in some of our yeah. discussions so we went back to look at it and it really talks about the building facade yeah. So because because there's this facade here, that, that in essence creates your street wall. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go back, you know, to the example B here is there's not a street wall yeah. mm -hmm. adjacent to the sidewalk. So that's why this came up and when we looked at it like, yeah, yeah. This, if this came in we would approve this today. But but you would but you could could you also add an indent of thirty feet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you could indent this and do a little block. Got it. Here. Okay. Yeah. And then going back to the three different modes I, I mean 30 versus 50 to me I'm, I'm not sure I have a strong opinion either way I guess I would have a question on those that maybe are closer to this like is the courtyard model something that is still popular viable 
beneficial? That's a legitimate question. Not, not. I don't have a feeling either way. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess have we had many requests for that? Is that are there like maybe a use case or advantage to, to that? So these weren't all just like courtyards, right? Like this could theoretically also be, we said like an open air type patio space. Correct. It could be an outdoor like dining space. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just yeah. referring to this courtyard because it goes deeper right. than it is right. wider. That's yeah, yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So C, I guess maybe a better way. Yeah, isn't this something where we really want to allow maximum flexibility yes. so that whatever the right. person what coming into too. the space thinks is going to be most successful? That, that's where I'm talk at. about not detracting from the yeah. eclecticism. I think yeah. we want to be as flexible here as possible because somebody really wants to carve out open space. Yeah. What's wrong with that? And if they think that's the most yeah. as long as viable it's use, act activated. Correct. Yeah. Space, yeah. That that's the most viable use of the space. I think it's going to add interest and diversity and all kinds of. This cool is stuff. what I'm hoping the Stan and Jason crew will jump in though, because the way I'm hearing that is, is that if we do maximum flexibility and openness is okay, then then the. The more flexible you go, though, we're not. Are we? Are we requiring a build two zone anymore? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying get rid of it altogether, but mm -hmm. I, I think we should. I mean, obviously, you did these three examples for illustration purposes, mm -hmm. but I mean, pick pick whatever maximum you have to. But in terms of how it's configured, is yes. guess what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. That's the flexibility. Not, I agree. Not, not the volume, but the configuration. Yes. 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 So I feel like we're playing with that idea a little bit more though. That they brought up just now. Why even have the build two zone? Doesn't the doesn't the highest and best use of these properties dictate that they want to make the most use of the open? I don't know that. I don't know how much we need to encourage people to build. Well, zone. right. It's what I'm getting. It's to. like gravity. Well, it, so yeah. Except that we wouldn't probably be happy if they didn't. You're probably right. So most likely want to make as much value out of take as much value out of the square footage of property that they own but if somebody came in there and didn't want to would we be okay with you know picture a street wall would we be okay with yeah. one guy in the middle back 30 feet off of, off of the bill we probably wouldn't be right I think, that, I think that's, that's the right. yeah but no. so that so the answer to your question is probably they're not going to but do we want to regulate in such a way to prevent them and I think the configuration should allow for max flexibility, but you ought to have some limit on how yes. much carve out you have. But whether it's a circle, a star, a square, a triangle, a trapezoid, who cares? Yeah. Right. And, but it, I agree completely with Martin, and, and I my, I'm thinking the A, B, and C are all fine on tape. in terms of the configuration. Okay. That's, that one. But yes. It was yeah, I mean, I think it, I think some of the other flexibility could come in. Right now, on the F1, it's a zero to five. So if there was that desire to push it back, you could go zero to ten. Like the F2, I mean, that's that's the other option too, is to make that a little bit more depth if you wanted that building not to be right at the property line. Um, you know, we could look at that too to do zero to ten of both the F1 and F2. I would agree with that. So I'll jump in. Stan, Jason, and then we're going to write this ordinance if we get that far. Do you guys have enough direction on that for what the council just said? Yes. Is everybody okay with the zero to ten as opposed to zero to five? I like zero to five. I think F, in F one, I like zero to five. Let's make it zero to five, but you can ask for the other five. What about <laughs> when we've come up with these just for this purpose? We were the numbers fifty and thirty. Any were those tied? Were those like a percentage of the face, or were those the percentages of the area? Or what were those? Where'd those come from? Uh, this was just us throwing a couple options out there, okay. so we haven't really explored it much more than saying, all right, 30 feet, 33%. So I think we'd have to do a ma maximum because obviously we don't yeah. Yeah. want to skirt around some right. of the build zone mm -hmm. areas. Um, I think going forward, we would have to figure out, you know, on a 100 foot wide watt, do we, does that flexible area become a square footage to say, okay, you can do 30 by 50 deep, which is 1500 if I'm right, and you can do 1500 in the front. So I think we would have to try to play around with some of the dimensions and the trapezoids and the hexagons and all, all those unique spaces, but the rectangles and what, what we want to sort of talk about. My, my sense, the reason I ask is my sense right now of this is that I'm less concerned with the square footage and more concerned with the percent of the, f of the, st of okay. the face mm -hmm. because the whole point here is to is the street wall premise. So I wouldn't want somebody taking their 
1,500 square feet and having it run almost all the way along right. from the building. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, with our current code, it is a percentage of the facade, or okay. 35 feet as the max. Gotcha. So yeah. Okay. If you pay something off that. That would, that would do it. Okay. okay. So I'll ask again, same staff, are you guys good? I think we are, Anything else on build two? No, other than thank you very much for the uh, three dimensional renderings because they had the desired effect of driving a lot of these conversations. It's one thing to see the stuff flat, but recall when we did this the downtown years ago, once everybody saw the three dimensional, whoa! <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the star shaped cutout at the next <laughs> meeting. <laughs> The commissioner told five points. Yeah, yeah. Five <laughs> points. Six points. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> you pick. You pick. <laughs> All right, land. What about land uses? So land uses would be oh. everything in the table plus if we are on the same page with the uh, home box and residential accessories. So, let's okay. go through these first. Yeah. Um, oh. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> well, no. Out. Let's. But let's treat this as three sections, right? There's the residential use, the home occupational uses and then there's the table of uses yeah. so as we look at the residential uses ex accessory structures the takeaway was the next slide right so that you guys are going to try mm -hmm. this is sort of where staff thinks they heard us mm -hmm. does that fit with the majority of the people sitting here I like this yes yeah okay so the extended family unit concept is correct okay yes Okay, and then the home occupation portion. This again is what uh, we think we said. Home I'm seeing mostly the head nods. We yes. Said we, think. Yeah. 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 we said we think. <laughs> this is like 46 houses, right? Yes, I believe we counted around 40, 46 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I had a question about this, um, and this takes us to the table probably, but. We say no retail, restaurant, et cetera. I had two questions just to just to aggravate everybody. Because um, that's kind of why we're here. Uh, no, because this is sort of a check down, right? And what we thought was do we want to take mm -hmm. the next step towards an ordinance? I had two questions. One was um, how would we feel about somebody, you know, somebody using their garage right now in this scenario could, like, say, as a tax returner an accountant mm -hmm. could have an occasional visitor right mm -hmm. and I think we're saying we think that's okay what would we feel about somebody who was doing running like a bakery out of there how would we treat that there's a lot there's a that's a whole industry of really almost to order stuff right we're not talking about a busy bee you're not talking about sit down there you're talking about food yeah. to go Re right retailer right well that's the question right is it it's not retail it's it, it, right. yeah Food to go. That's health code. But yeah. it, it, well, the issue, it's health code from that standpoint, but the issue we were talking about was the idea of parking. Does it require parking? What's the impact on neighbors of people coming and going? And so I think when we were talking about this before, we were generally thinking about, you know, more professional service kinds of folks who wouldn't necessarily have a flow of people coming and going. Just asking the question because this is the time to talk about it. Yeah, so I guess the question I have is uh, with the county health department requirements, how, how viable is that going to be if someone's yeah. going to put a bakery in their garage with all the plumbing and other requirements that you're going to have to have? And be able to accommodate more people right. than like a tax prep person would, right? Like, you know, that's time consuming. Would we, if they were able to figure it out and wanted to spend the money, what would we say about it? That's the question. So I, I think feasible that somebody would take their primary house kitchen and modify it to health, county health department standard. I think it's in the realm of feasible. Yeah, the, the, I'm looking at L, not the garage. So, yeah, but mm -hmm. either, okay, I said garage, but maybe it's the other way. Sure. Do we care? I mean, maybe we don't care. Yeah. I just want to sort of double check it. I would, yeah, I'd be, I would be okay with that. Realistically, if you're talking about that, it's not going to be like 46 houses. It's going to be one, maybe two. And at that point, you know, again, I don't, I don't think you're going to get a, the, a volume when, when you think about those types of things. That's going to be any more than a tax prep person or something who's offering yeah. a service. I mean, so probably a better example would be a catering business, Correct. which I wouldn't have a problem with because they're doing their prep and then they're just taking, taking their stuff and going somewhere. They're not having people coming in and out all day. Right. 
But if you're doing yeah. something to order, that's a labor intensive business, right? And you're not going to be having 15 oh, people right. coming in and out today. So I'm fine with it personally. Greg, you look like you were to say something. No? Uh, I'm willing to think about it. Okay. The catering piece makes sense. The two order, I'm, I'm a little less certain. I, I'm, I'm not convinced that the, the flow of traffic would be as low as Leslie is. So I, I suppose it would be hard to craft an ordinance that would distinguish between I'm picking up food mm -hmm. versus I'm mm -hmm. picking up my catering order. Right. right. Yeah. Could, could this be something that was uh, allowed, similar to what we do with special uses, where individual, so thinking of our tire stores, and things like that. Where we so this category of home lock would be a special use? So, uh, I mean, is there, in order to allow for more flexibility, so um, that that mm -hmm. thing gets proposed, and we can then explore the impact of that a little deeper. Maybe. No. no. <laughs> yeah. I special uses as, Am I getting as restrictive as we can. Yeah. 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 getting hot. Yeah. It's as a person who's writing that article. But so the other thing I wonder about is just the allowable size of or the number of employees because you're especially like when you're thinking about that you're going to vastly limit the amount that somebody can produce if you're only allowing say two or three people to be on site at any given time so that might be one way that we can kind of get get to some of our issues and, and then there's the whole you know how much are we going to really police this right I mean, how, well, that that's you know, yeah. my complaint. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's that leads me more toward no, <laughs> to be honest. Right? So. But how do we know if it's that or Pepperidge, Pepperidge Farm? Oh, it's <laughs> still <laughs> thinking. Well, I'm, I'm still of the mindset that I'm trying to get more progressive. Yeah. And so I that's agree. where I'm landing on it. But I, I just wanted to add that to the conversation yeah. because mm -hmm. when we talked before, we were really sort of focused on a different type of business mm -hmm. in these spaces. So just something to think about. Yeah, and it, I mean, to, just to piggyback <coughs> off of that, I'm, I guess I'm more permissive for one and two, but I'm less so in three. Mm -hmm. Sure. That, that's what, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I live. Well, this is already more permissive than what's currently Correct. allowed. Yes, so there could be an argument to be made for, let's do this and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. what, do you th what are you guys hearing? Help, Stan. <laughs> uh, we're here. We have a little bit of work to do on this. Uh, I, I think it's it comes down to Commissioner uh, Suss. If you had said if we limit the number of employees, we're probably good that way because then that would limit your ability to have a big commercial kitchen and have a bakery there. Um, I do know that caterers are. I believe it. We'd have to check the ordinance to see how they would. If there's a different use categorization versus a bakery, which is more retail, more walking in and out mm -hmm. and stuff that way. I think it's. I think it's. It's just going to be. A, I think this section is a challenge, just based on the uses and where, mm -hmm. size-wise and stuff. I think also if we limit the size to yeah. a, a thousand square mm -hmm. feet, um, which that where we could help help me out. Like typical kitchen, what size is a typical residential kitchen? I know they're not really typical, but they're eclectic. Yeah, so you, yeah. Couple hundred square feet. Couple hundred square feet. So I mean, you could probably get a pretty good sized kitchen in there for a thousand square feet. Yeah. But then if you only have one, one uh, uh, spouses and, and one employee, how much are you really producing? You can crank out a lot. If you had if you had two yeah. employees and you set yourself up, you could crank out a lot. Yeah. So so that was very helpful, Stan. What I just did, what you can see through we just the council, is I proposing that this is discussion issue number two for our next round. A little bit more meat on the bones. Or are we good to go? Yeah. Well, I I'd like to hear more about thoughts after you guys have listened to us. But how you might suggest trying to, yeah. with people's concerns, yeah, how yeah. you might suggest trying to constrain that a little. Before we leave land uses, can I just put a stake in the ground that in F1 and F2, we do not become more res more permissive with respect to personal improvement services? Oh, yeah. Before we go there, just to uh, Commissioner. We haven't Hussle. left that yet. I still coming to the just table. the home lock issue. I don't think we're yeah. going to yeah. All right. Yeah, we're All right. still coming back to that. In the, on the home lock issue, um, I mean, are there are there examples? I mean, is this already going on in town? And, you know, I sure. Think it might oh be, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I think it's a real possibility. Well, the, yeah. The, so so oh. so so my my point is, I mean, we're not you know if Maybe we're not getting a bunch of complaints <laughs> about that, and these things are already happening. 
what are we what are we worried about here? Right? Um, so um, I think the challenge is just identifying the business that we're not thinking. Always on a cake lady. You know, there's going to you know a caterer is a great example of something yeah. that. Sounds like a nice little mom and pop operation until that caterer has a commercial kitchen down the street that he's he or she is pumping out stuff and bringing to the house because it it's it's a cheaper space to to run out of. Um, yeah, but I I struggle too, and this I think it is important to to have a little deeper dive because I think of we think I think of retail in a lot of different ways. Someone who does custom wedding invitations, mm -hmm. no problem. Is that retail? I don't know. I think it is technically. So I, I'm I'm struggling to pinpoint mm -hmm. where the line is. As yeah. it seems like we all are. Yeah. Yep. Um, Same place. The idea of being less restrictive suddenly doesn't feel as comfortable in this discussion mm -hmm. as it did yeah. in the other two. That's for <laughs> right. sure. So. So I, I think a little more thought and maybe staff can try to hone in a little mm -hmm. bit more on that. That okay. would be helpful. If that's the will of the council, we'll yeah. come back and we'll talk a little bit about design guidelines and we'll talk a little bit more about some home boxes. Yeah. Really yeah. Have yep. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to talk about the table. Sorry. And I jumped Martin in. really, would, really would like to talk really about the table. So he's got to stake the plant. Yes. What do you got? So F1 and F2. Uh, we're proposing to be more permissive by allowing certain things as of right under personal improvement services. I would like to stick to what we have in the downtown. So, uh, personal improvement services? Improvement personal services. improvement services. There's a number of listed categories, and there, yeah, are, th there are things we're allowing in um, F. We're proposing to allow in F1 and F2 as permitted that are not currently allowed in the downtown. So make it like the downtown. Match the downtown. I'm just going to leave it there. Do you want to, so similarly, if we're not talking about height, we're talking about F1 is really sort of our downtown core minus the height because the downtown core is lower. But are you thinking that these general health fitness studios instructional go into F3 or just F1 and F2? No, I, uh, well, I'm sorry, that's a fair clarification. Uh, no, I wasn't proposing that we change F3. That's why I only okay. limited my comments to F1 and F2. Right. It's just I would have F1 and F2 pretty much match what's in DC, DB, and DT. Okay. So we had a second on that from Mr. Davenport. Please. Yeah, I'll go on. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Anybody object to that? Danny's in. Looks like I we're think in. so. You went? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Wanna, honestly, if we're going to talk about things being artist-focused, I feel like tattoo and body piercing goes along with that, but I'm going to be the losing battle here. Mm -hmm. To me, that's another art form, but... Don't, don't disagree with you, but I was trying to be consistent. I have one particular one of So we heard... <laughs> but I mean, to me, that, that is a form. That is an art form, right? So, yeah. Know. So the idea on the table is... I don't disagree with you. The whole category... And then Commissioner Sadowski, if you get just proposed to bring this line up. Mm -hmm. That's not the one I'm concerned about. Yeah. And, and keep the tattoo and body piercing establishments as permitted. Fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I, I guess I'm make, making sure I understand. Say that again, Dave. Sorry. So when Commissioner oh. Tully said yep. personal improvement, like, Match all, read that is all of these sub points. Yeah. I, I was just trying to address it as a block, but sure. I'm fine with that adjustment. But then yeah. when Commissioner Sadowski Fugit said, Hey, yeah. what about this category? I'm yeah. just saying, Look, we could we could take yes. this direction from here up, yeah, agree, and leave this. I'm That's good. Fine. But I haven't heard, we yeah, haven't heard enough yet. We've heard a couple folks, yeah, so I far. think there's some head nod in that direction. Good? Martin's saying fine, I'm saying I'm fine. fine. Okay, yeah. leave. Yep, had to. As now as we do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, Martin, were you done? Yes. Okay. Um, the special use for bed and breakfast in F3, I feel like is a little bit of a can of worms as it pertains to <laughs> VRBOs and Airbnbs. I understand it's a special use, so we'll have some control over that. Um, 
but it's I, already a special use in downtown, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. Okay. I've got a couple of other ones. Everybody good? Everybody okay to leave it? Wraps it up. Is everybody all right leaving that? All right, so this, this was no change. Hold on one second. Sorry. Is everybody okay with leaving that? I mean, that's a, a that is a can right. of worms. And remember, special use is not really. Um, yeah, it's not. So I mean, I, 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 I think bit. downtown uh, is a little different than a resi residential house. And it's I, a losing battle. Well, there's a there, I have a question though, but I. Could you maybe not let it be this moment, but give us a little more commentary on how whether there's any opportunity to control to effectively control some of that through the parking related stuff, parking related issues. Um, and then there's right if it's being used that way, ostensibly yeah. it's owner occupied, and then you'd have parking challenges. Mm -hmm. Then does the does a bed and breakfast have a? Are they subject to the same health codes and in terms of kitchens and all the things we just talked about with uh, the um, home occupation? They, they I think they, they would be. Yeah. Uh, Let's check that. Yeah. We'll double check. Sure. I do. Yeah. So, so this one we're hearing a little bit of question. We have the idea of bed and breakfast in the F3 as proposed as special use. A couple of council members questioning that and then following that lead, if we added parking requirements to that particular use, would that be enough control? It would change, it would change the feel of that property for sure, right? Because it would be an on-site parking requirement. Mm -hmm. We do have a definition of the zoning code for better breakfast. Would that, would that help lay off of that? It's Please. It's important yeah. discussion. Uh, so better breakfast in the zoning ordinance is an owner-occupied private residence that offers sleeping accommodations to guests for rents in the owner's principal residence. Food may only be served to overnight guests of the bed and breakfast establishments. Doesn't require the owner to stay that night, does it? Uh, yeah, it just says owner-occupied private right. residence. <laughs> Thank you for that. I couldn't enforce that anyway. No. Mm -hmm. if you just All right. Allow it, your you point can. is well taken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other table-related comments. Greg, you thought you said you had some. Yeah. Um, Dave, could you flip to the page that's got the nursing home on it? Yep. Um, <coughs> first off, I guess, could you define for me sheltered care? So it's defined through the state ordinances as sheltered care, and so that's typically some sort of a some sort of assisted assisted sort of living or arrangement there, where there's somebody there providing care and services to those people. Stan, do we have one of those in town? The uh, supportive living facility up in um, Ogden, on Lacey Road, Lacey. north of Ogden, okay. is a supportive is a sheltered care mm -hmm. facility. I'm, I'm not wild about it in either one of F3 or F2, but I think it's a better fit in two than it is in three. Um, <clears throat> so you want to remove it from F1? Remove it uh, from three. I'm oh, sorry, remove from three? You know, the, the group home piece, I think, is, a, is an easier fit um, with the, the occupancy max. And I'm, I'm just thinking about, especially particularly in three, um, Think about it, additional you know, potential for ambulance traffic and things like that um, starts to get a little more impactful. Is it just the sheltered care, not the nursing home question? Just the I'd, I'd like to remove it out of both. Um, yeah, for shelter, care in particular. shelter care I, and nursing home, right? Yeah. I, ideally, I'd like to remove it out of both, but I'm willing to be flexible on it. We see F3, up, up until this point, we've got most of the conversation on F3 has been largely that it's, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm overstating it, but traditional residential, mm -hmm. right? R4. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's R4-ish. 
And so, I, you know, I guess I, to Greg's point, that's a dramatic difference. Yeah. You know, a, a facility like, if you think about the slip up off of Lacey, that's, I didn't nothing like an R4. No. Um, so I, I'm feeling a lot like Greg, I think, at this point. Yeah, me I, me too. Well, everybody's in on this? And that was only okay because it was a lot better than what was there before. <laughs> so yeah, the construction F2, F2, is quite a bit. I'm comfortable. I'm more agreeing. I'm okay keeping it F2. I'm okay with keeping it F2. Yeah, I was focused on F3. So I just yeah, make sure I follow this. The council yeah. is supportive of the concept. Greg raised and Enzo clarified, and the F3 on the council's in on this. This is a change, right? F3, yes. That's yeah, right. that's a change that council supports in the F3. Okay. Other. Table related stuff. Can we go to the trade school piece? What is the broader definition of trade school? Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it does call it, there's a, a wide range of schools that can, can be in there. We'll get you the definition mm -hmm. though. So. I know there's a cosmetology school already in that mm -hmm. uh, on Burlington, just north of the Fairview train station. There, yeah, I'm just thinking there there could be some heavier industrial things that fall into that. You know, cosmetology is one thing, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I think it, it's a departure from sort of the artisanal um, you know industry that we've been thinking of, mm -hmm. to poten potentially depending on exactly. Yeah. Greg, is your concern that a trade school will become industrial in terms of its impact on the neighborhood? Correct, it's 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 very yeah. correct. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. use that. That's what it is in the downtown. Then you'd be able to. You'd have. Check uh, the impact on the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. And wouldn't you have built in kind of constraints on the lot usage? I mean, I'm thinking, Greg, like, you know, you wouldn't want it to have a backyard full of poles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As an example. Mm -hmm. But you really wouldn't, that really couldn't happen with some of the other drivers, right? Correct. Couldn't yeah. take enough. Couldn't take enough one site and only cover a third of it and put a bunch of utility poles in the backyard. Well, you'd have to build to the build two zone in the front, but then there's nothing in the back that says you couldn't have oh. an open yard. Okay. Or something. Yes, yeah, so that's you're operating outside. Outside, if you're operating outside, then there's certain other noise and yeah. other restrictions like that that sure. come into play. Sure. See, can I ask, um, what does current zoning allow right now? It's still special. So currently in the downtown business down on court, it's a special no, use. I'm talking about currently in the current F1, F2 areas, their current zoning. Oh. Right now, oh, isn't gotcha. this already a permitted use? And so the I, trade school. Speaking of special use, are we getting more restrictive than what's currently allowed? Yeah. So, so we have a lot of really B. Ask. We have some B2 and B3 in here. Uh, so that is a permitted use in the B2 and B3 zoning district along with B1 that's a, yeah. some existing yeah. zoning in there. So, so it's, it's, gonna all, it's gonna depend on what part of the Fairview area, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And so then it's already going on there though. It's already and it already so went in by right, is your point, yes. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the manufacturing districts their special uses now are permitted in the B1, B2, B3. To yeah. Mike's point though, it, obviously there's already a cosmetology school there, and that's not necessarily what I'm aiming at. Are there other trade schools in the F1, F2 districts? Because if there are, then I think Mike's got a valid point. If there aren't, then Well, but they'd be grandfathered in. It's no different than Lang's Auto in the middle sure. of downtown. That wouldn't be allowed today. Yeah. Sure. They can get to you to if you really kick anybody yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, Jason's got re Who's excited to have another zoning definition right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so trade school uses in an enclosed building that focus on teaching the skills needed to perform a particular job. Examples include schools of cosmetology, modeling academies, computer training facilities, vocational schools, administrative business training facilities, and similar uses. Truck driving schools are classified as trucking and transportation terminals, uh, otherwise uh, wholesale distribution and storage use category. Keyword there is enclosed, right? Enclosed, yeah. correct. Okay. So, so what limits to you, you could, yeah, okay, but you could have, um, you could have some pretty, so think Very back. Well, like, yeah, I mean, think know. think oh, back to second exactly <laughs> second floor <laughs> residential <laughs> in a neighboring building. Mm -hmm. You could have mm -hmm. there are some activities that would be part of some trade schools that I I think you'd want to find some way to prevent them from going on in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most yeah. of that definition I'm totally fine with. Yeah, there, right. There's, but there's squish in there. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What's the definition of squish? Can you look that <laughs> So the direction I'm hearing you potentially is if we were to tweak the the definition of trade school to make sure that it's not an industrial type, so. and that's what yeah. you're getting. Yeah. Right. Council's really cool well. with that. I yeah. will just add, I'm not interested in seeing that in F1. Okay, let's, so that's first me. we'll go mm -hmm. with the concepts. I think the other part of it is, what do we want to see there, right. rather than, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in kicking anybody out either, mm -hmm. but aren't we here to make sure that what the future state is what we're looking for? And I just don't think F1 is a great, I feel there is um, better opportunity in F2 and F, or F2 right. for that. F2 so, F1. yeah, I agree, and that's exactly yeah. what we did with the downtown. There were all kinds of industrial uses yeah. in the downtown, and we didn't run anybody out, but. Yeah. Changed over the time by by sure. transforming to what the, yeah. the future, the vision of the future. Yeah. Okay. So just make sure I'm following. <laughs> the concept of trade school as permitted in the F two, as long as it's not an industrial impact. Yeah. Thumbs up all around. Yeah. Yeah. Then F two. And then the question was put on the table: Do we want to allow that in F one? See, I'm not sure. I, I, this is a split and hairs thing, and I don't have an answer to it. But I totally see what you're saying. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm sitting here witnessing one in each right now. One in each, one in one, and one, one in two. Tra tra vocational trade school in in both downtown and in Fairview oh. as it sits today. You know, it's so it's a. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really, I don't have a good answer yet. Well, but it's a good question. Yeah. Well, and in some cases, though, the trade schools also provide opportunity for people to have the hands-on training and is still providing a service, mm -hmm. a service of which would probably be allowed in that district. So I'm okay yeah, keeping right. it oh, in okay. F1. Well, what you know, if that's the limitation, then? And, that and yeah, I don't know if that could be a service in, that would be but allowed that would in be That's great. a good way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. That could work. I mean, because I know when I was in college, oh. I went to an Aveda training school because it was a cheap haircut, but it still felt fancy because it was Aveda, right? <laughs> 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 Those are there is a bonus to that, right? When you're young and mm -hmm. starting off. So the concept I'm hearing is F1 trade schools have to be open to the for public service. We're slicing yeah. the garlic pretty yeah. thin right now. Yeah, we are, but that's okay. Yeah. That's all right because this is just, <laughs> just a little framework for us yeah. to help us out, right? F1 trade schools exactly. only on Tuesdays. I <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> Open to public for service. Okay. What? But what about the concept of it being? Could you limit the schools to only the services that would be allowed in F1? So, auto mechanics, like we we're not allowing. Right. Right. I get it. I get the concept. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Because the. Yeah. Then it would tie it to the impacts right. of the rest of the district. Right. Well, That's I, the I, 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 I yeah. Yeah. That actually might be an easier way to define it. Would it. Be, yes. It would be actually. But I but I think staff is picking up on the yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay. The, the start when Greg yeah. said, "Don't let the trade school be more impactful than the underlying." Zoning. That's right. that's the kind of yeah. right? Correct. Absolutely. And this right. isn't going to be a zoning code next week either. Right. So. Yeah. Other table related stuff. All right, I have a question. You can help me find it. There was a place where we talk, we sort of, in the typical uses, I think, we kind of make a note about ruling out, like, contractor offices. There we are. Building service, and we, we threw up typical uses of contractor office. If it's a contractor office, I'm focusing on office, not storage yard, how is that materially different than, scroll down, then scroll down some more. Then uh, no, back up. Corporate office. Then a yeah, a corporate office, a therapist, a counselor, an architect, yeah, business an attorney. Office. I mean, it's at that point, it's just an office, right? So I'm questioning that a little bit. It might be my understanding of definitions, but the, it seems like if it's we're not talking about a storage yard, we're not talking about storing right. trucks and stuff. But if it's a truly an office office, do we care what business is in the office? 
And I don't know how that sorts out with the definition of building service. Maybe we need Jason so to read some more. Let's read the definition yeah. of <laughs> business services. <laughs> yes. Fine, right now, what was there? Business um, service. Should I start with building service? <laughs> building service. Building, building service. service, yes. Okay. Are we all ready? Right. Building service uses that provide maintenance and repair services for all structural and mechanical elements of structures, as well as the exterior spaces of a premise. Typical uses include contractor offices, janitorial, landscape maintenance, extermination, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, window cleaning, and similar services. There's a whole there's a whole business industry that is you know has offices and sales teams, and that that's the services they provide. That's not necessarily where they're trucks and equipment are mm -hmm. um, so I don't know I don't know if we're really ruling them out here or if we're only sort of ruling them out or how this shakes up but just jumped off the page yeah I think some of our <coughs> some of the times what we see is the contractor office might have where I'm able to drive a truck a work truck home and then I come to the office with the work truck so it might feel more impactful as yeah. opposed to uh, driving the Honda CRV or the Honda Elantra to the office, so they might feel like it's more of an impact. Well, do, do we really need to? We do. Do we really need to make this distinction? Because if it's your situation, Mayor, where it's 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 the cement company, but their sales team has a sales office. Mm -hmm. They're not driving in the mixer trucks. It's the sales office. They're going to call it an office office. Yeah. Yeah. And they have to deal with the yeah. contractor part. It, maybe no. so. That's but that's why I was asking the question because right. of the typical use note. But, right. but now that I, I hear the definition, I think of a plumber. And their office is their place where they park their trucks and their logoed vans and things like that. And but that would be a plumbing business. But that's a plumber. Yeah, but, but it's still also the, their office as well. It's not like, I'm not sure how you yeah. Well, I'm that's not sure how you're you getting at it. How you leave it. that one alone yeah. because it's working just fine. Let's not try to mess with it. Yeah, I, I think, I, think I, I tend to agree. I think I, I'm a little concerned about the contractor office yeah, because I do feel like yeah, it's kind of more it. than that. So yeah. I vote we leave it. Yeah, and we do differentiate currently. Right? Yes. So when right. someone calls in and it's Joe's Concrete Company. You can tell an orange from a really, pineapple. You don't need. Yeah. But it's in a high-rise building, and they say it's really just our sales staff or our yeah. IT support staff. But it's a Joe's Concrete Company. Then we class we classify it as an office because there's not going to be the concrete trucks. There's not going right. to be right. that other okay. ancillary type stuff. Right? Does that work for you, Mayor? Yeah, that works for me. It does probably just to complicate things. It might some wording to what Jason read might make some sense. Some add, added wording. Which I think speaks to the council direction to just leave it as is, as proposed, <laughs> right? Because I yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Who's this talking about? It's only fair you have someone to take it. Take it. <laughs> it's way better to have the manager than the attorney. Take the spotlight off the manager. language, Mary. <laughs> yeah, it, maybe it's a losing battle. I'm okay with that. Uh, it's If that's the way we're dealing with it in practice, that's fine. I, Want to make sure that we're not. There's any army on the field. There's no battle. <laughs> any other table stuff? Okay, we're, and we're coming back to design guidelines later, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we heard a uh, check marks where we heard concurrence, and we got direction. So I'm gonna put a check mark by land uses, and I think the things we're coming back for future discussion are. Design guideline applicability and some more work on the home occupation stuff. Mike? I have something that's not on the list. How about increasing building coverage allowance in the F3? We haven't talked about building, co building coverage limitations at all. Talk about FAR? No, not FAR, building coverage. So we have, we, right now, we, it's mm -hmm. in, like in our R4s, our it's 32%. Yep. 32%. Mm -hmm. Are there building so coverage things contemplated here, state increase? I don't believe we got down into that to that granular item, but if, because the F3 is reading as more residential zoning classification, we probably would just go with the standard 32%. And that's what I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe there we could be a little bit more permissive. Because I, I mean, I run up against that sometimes with, just with the residential use. You know, if we're letting somebody do something more with their home occupation, um, we might want to give give a little bit more for that. 
increase tied your to coverage. that. Um, yeah. but, um, just that's that's another limiting factor in what people can do. Would that be a place where we would want to talk about you know, at the risk of splitting more garlic? Um, slicing. slicing more garlic, splitting hairs. But um, we thought, you know, in this area, we, we've comp certainly contemplated as residential, but we are trying to allow home office use, yeah, but also duplexes. And if you were trying to find a way to, to allow a little more residential density without getting, without apartment buildings, right? One way to do that might be additional lot coverage if it's a multi family dwelling. Sure. I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm, we've already talked about trying to take, look at ways to limit those home occupation uses so they don't get to be something more than what we want them to be. So I don't know that I'm excited about wanting to expand for that, but the idea that a, a duplex might get a little more leeway is interesting. We, we could come back, we're coming back anyway, right? So we could add a building coverage section for the next discussion. Sure. In, in the F3. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And some uh, building coverage is the footprint of the structure. Is there anything, I believe it's 18 inches off the ground. So right. that counts. Uh, an anchoring patio does not count. Right. A detached garage would, a gazebo would. So that's how it does, and then the footprint of the house. So it's 32% it's of your lot area. Mm -hmm. City of Boto, Colorado, it's only 20%. No, so, uh, yeah, I, I run into even stricter requirements and, and actually others. There's, there's actually been scholars that don't even have so it's, it's some lean heavy on FAR. Yep. Um, it tends not to be as big of an issue in Downers Grove. Well, I learned today that we have no building height minimum, which I think is very interesting. That there is no minimum to the building height. In the zoning well, code. There actually in the zoning, zoning code. But, but in the building code, in order to have an occupiable room, you have to have a seven foot ceiling. Yeah. So there's that. Could be. Could be Good underground. Excellent. <laughs> 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 the realtor. These two guys are dangerous. Uh, Clover's bunker. Clover's yeah. <laughs> 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 bunker. We'll come back next time with three discussion points. What do you got, Dave? Design guidelines, home ox, and building cover. Building cover. All right. Sound good, guys? Yeah. We have uh, some guests. You guys have listened to this uh, sausage being made. You got any comments we should be thinking about going forward? Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a clarification on this happens to be on Rogers, the R2, where across the street is R3. Does that mean that that's adjacent so you have to have a setback on the street front? Or no? No. No. Okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. Rich? Yeah, I have a few points. Could we go back to the extended housing units? Uh, the graphic that's got, um, yeah, DE, the, that one, in a way. So uh, I like to advocate for F, and I don't really understand the difference between D and F, because it's tacked on to the back of the house. It's my understanding that this would be a family members who would have to. No, 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 no. That's D. F would be, you would rent it out to anybody. Oh, okay. So, I mean, you That's could have a larger space on the back of D? As long as you meet the rest of the code, yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the first uh, thing. The second thing is, it strikes me in Fairview that 1.4 may not handle the real requirements. And the attitude around uh, Main Street multifamily is somebody or maybe two people are walking to the train, and that has been kind of self-leveling that you know, if they had two cars, they just wouldn't move into that. Mm -hmm. They only had one spot uh, available. And I don't know with those other apartments on Fairview, uh, particularly the ones that are uh, to the north um, of Maple, and even the ones to the south, what those parking requirements are, but I think you might be more likely to have two commuters. Uh, I mean, you could have, and hopefully we will have people walking to the Fairview train station, but I think the farther you get away from downtown and the express trains, the more likely you're, you're going to have that. You're going to have two cars and, you know, they need to do that. Um, and then the other thing is with downtown guidelines, and I'd be more impressed if we stuck to the downtown guidelines, 
And I think the concern that was uh, mentioned was the, uh, the eclectic nature. And because we're not dictating architectural styles, uh, you know, you look at 4915 Main Street, right across from Tomb Funeral Home, totally different architecture than went into that neighborhood, but it still met, met our guidelines. And I think because we didn't um, dictate architecture, so you have to have similar architectural styles, I think that gives you uh, the flexibility you need, but still the advantage of having, you know, defined base, a middle, and a top, you know, with some articulation and uh, you know, more solid building materials. So that's, uh, that's my two cents on that. Thank you. Janet? Um, yeah, I have um, some concerns. Five-story buildings are too high. They just are. And um, people do not like Maple Avenue. They may not, you might not be hearing complaints, but if you stand at a get-together at church or, or wherever, people don't like it. It's too high. Um, the, um, and, and parking for these uses, you're going to have parking um, out in front of single-family residences all day for your employees or even two or three employees plus customers coming in. It's um, not tenable for a residential use. Um, the, uh, the idea that it's only going to happen going to be 46 houses and once you start doing stuff, it's going to expand. So they, it's naive to think that what you do here is going to be limited to this particular area, and you guys are all smarter than that. Um, I'm kind of curious about the public engagement part of all that, that you built into this because I can't, I'm, I cannot imagine that if people object to what you have here, and I, I do, and you know that in so many in some instances, that you're going to make any changes. I mean, I don't have any confidence that you're really going to take into account what people in the neighborhood and in the town want. So I hope that I'm wrong there. Um, and uh, again, just because people don't complain doesn't mean that they're they're satisfied. Um, or they don't complain to you. Um, and in terms of the uses for um, uh, commercial uses, I think you need to take into account, you need somebody at a bakery, what it, um, I, what the use will be that would throw off odors for the neighborhood. I don't want to be sitting on my deck and drinking a cocktail and get smelling somebody cooking Chinese curry on. Um, so odors uh, in, associated with some of these uses are an important factor too, I think. And um, the trade school stuff, I think that some of it, I mean, I have clients who are trade schools, and I think that there are um, the idea that you're going to have um, the schools that um, uh, train for the uses in, in that section. I think that that's clever. I, I like that, and and that, that's a good, a good thought. But um, the Fairview focus area is an odd mix, but it is still backing up to residential areas where people are concerned about the values of their residential property and how their use and enjoyment of their own property is going to be impacted. And the you know, multiple density, multiple uses, multiple businesses, and will change the characters of the neighborhood. We all are going to change the character of town. To, and, and I'm not sure that, I'm not sure it's really better. That's what we got. Or? I've got two buckets that I want to talk about. The first bucket is that I passed out an affordable housing article that came out of the Chicago Tribune for Highland Park. And my question for the council would be, how amenable is the council to take a look at a grant structure to build affordable housing, which is what they did in Highland Park? Because we've not talked about that tonight. And with that grant structure, in that article, it also references 
that what Highland Park was looking at was having the cashiers that we come into contact with daily in the stores being able to live in the community. And that was one of the underlying goals. My second bucket goes back to your slide on land uses. And that's something that I've got a degree of familiarity with because I've been involved with that. And if we take a look there, um, what was the one? It was for the shelter care. What is that? Shelter care on the mm -hmm. bottom. Shelter care nursing home is one group where you're dealing with a for-profit type of arrangement. What I've been involved with has been with the group homes and the group living and even scattered site housing for persons with special needs. And my involvement has been with two agencies, one where we had like a group home, and the group home was basically we went into a community, worked with the community, we bought an apartment building that was 21 units, and you know it was one of these u-shaped types of things with the garden in the middle and all that kind of stuff we got hud funding we remodeled the whole thing you know from top to bottom which then became an asset to the community we also had staff that lived there 24 hours a day not the same staff but they had an apartment and therefore there was 24-hour staff coverage so if there were issues but most of the people under the guidelines that we had there had to be going to school, had to be working, something along those lines, and had to have, you know, like some kind of special needs grants. That worked out worked very well for that community. The other one that I was involved with um, was when we were taking a look, like when you look at the nursing home sheltered care, once you get into that kind of a system, it becomes very difficult to get out of that system. And the nursing homes, they may re refer you to another facility, but it's always within their same brand. So you can transition from skilled care to intermediate care, to shelter care, you know, ICF, all of those kinds of things. One of the uh, projects that I was involved with was that the state of Illinois was sued because the state of Illinois did not have housing facilities and therefore the nursing homes were the providers of housing. The nursing homes did not worry about rehabilitation. What our job was, was to evaluate people who were in the nursing home to see where they wanted to live. And I have referenced that in the past where we then worked with the community of LaGrange and what the community of LaGrange said is that if people who are in nursing homes, and granted this was a special grant, so I'm using that as an example, but people who were wanting to live in the LaGrange area, who had special needs, that they then would set up housing for them and take them into the community. Uh, the, those two programs both worked out very well. The one program we were dealing with rental units, where the people transitioning from nursing homes went into rental units, those were then subsidized through grants. The other, we built, bought the buildings outright, rehabbed the buildings with HUD grants, and then had uh, people living in there. And therefore, what I'm wondering about, because it falls under the idea of affordable housing, but also responding to uh, people with special needs. We've not had that kind of a discussion tonight. And I just like to raise that as some kind of a future point to look at. Okay. Thank you all. Anything else from the council for tonight? Chris. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to staff. A ton of information distilled in a way that we can have this kind of discussion so efficiently and all this all these things we're doing moving like awesome job this has been the best part of the this experience has been seeing how we're getting through these things i think in a complete way but also very efficiently the fact that we're already talking 
this stuff is fantastic. So thank you very much to Stan and the whole team. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Special shout out to Jason doing yeah. all the graphics. So yeah, appreciate all his models. Really help turn this discussion forward and stuff. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. Yep. Thank everybody on the side too. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Good night. Thank you.